Yo, 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 what is going on, COD Familia? It is your boy BN, aka Mr. Kingdom Builder, and today, finally, I have been able to catch a little bit of the tail end here from the SS1-2 war that has actually made its way to Zone 2. You're seeing some fighting happening now from TA, and we got BDL on this side, a couple God members as well. And I believe this is a Goru, if I have this actually semi-memorized. I do. <laughs> it's just not completely uncovered yet. Uh, we're going to end up going back in, and it looks like TA uh, decided to, to make their push out. There's our boy Koffel there. We got, I think, Does. I saw him fighting. We got our, our buddy Easy Peasy up there in the corner. Again, a couple nice familiar faces. And again, we're, we're going to watch the skirmish play out and then I'm going to give you guys a lay of the land for what has actually happened at this time. And then we're going to talk kind of big picture macro as far as the actual zone two landscape. We're going to be talking about some positioning, um, maybe how either or both of the sides could be playing this out. <clears throat> Uh, BD on God, though, pushing again here on TA a little bit more. I like how we're actually seeing, I guess, somewhat semi-spread that's happening. This is one of the things you'll often hear me talk about is I like the idea of being able to zoom out a little bit more, right? And and you, some of you have heard me mention this. I, I think if I could zoom out one more click, maybe two at the most, and still see the field, I think then we're going to start really, you know, getting some dope business going on as far as being able to watch PvP. Part of me just feels like I'm too far zoomed in. I can't really see any, like, the flanks, especially if there's really big fights. It, it, part of me feels like it limits somewhat on the scope of what we can see and then also being able to commentate and cast on it um, additionally so bdl and god looks like getting uh, a little bit of the best of uh, a small group or it doesn't look like everyone from ta has came out but you ended up seeing a small group there uh, looks like they have some decent amounts doesn't feel like they're being replenished too heavily here for god and bdl so you know, I would imagine that if everyone here from TA ended up pushing out, they probably would end up getting this. While we're waiting, though, let me uh, just move a little bit here for our guys. Boom, boom. And then we're going to hit a little bit of this. Ka chow, ka chow. For those of you who enjoy watching the movie Cars, Lightning McQueen. Ka chow, ka chow. No? It's a good movie. Anyways, uh, let's go see if there's a little bit more fighting here, just in case so we don't miss too much. If it is stalling for a bit, then we will wait. Okay, so maybe we'll just see if anything else happens here real quick. Otherwise, I'm going to go show you kind of what's happening in Zone 2 and talk a little bit big picture here, which, again, I love. Absolutely. So first and foremost, I love being able to watch just pvp in general but i also very much enjoy talking about the again to not overuse words but i like being able to, to talk about the overviews right the top downs the overheads of you know what's happening what are the implications you know what can happen just from a strategic standpoint oh this is pretty cool i like how yasan oh that i wonder if that was the I wonder if that was the invisibility cloak. I'm forgetting what that artifact's called now. I feel so bad uh, that he ended up using there on the cav. So it doesn't seem like there's too many here. I mean, to be honest, if TA and their guy and their team was a little, maybe, I don't know if I want to say a little bit more coordinated, but this, as far as just timing things out, like, I don't know if they're planning to do something here maybe they're just waiting for a set time but when you're looking at how many people they have versus how many people are here right now on the front lines i mean they have a numbers advantage right now where they could most likely clean this up and then push a little deeper and probably go start hitting some of these farmers right so you know being able to identify those opportunities is just as important when you're on the battlefield Right. And this is one of the things we've, we've talked about, right? If they ended up coming out of the game, ended up developing some type of a captain or a general role within the alliance where that person was just focusing, like they didn't even necessarily have to go and fight, right? But they were able to kind of have this overhead thing that they can do where 
they're able to maybe draw on the screen for the players in a very like small capacity. They could provide real-time pings. They could provide uh, just maybe other orders, right? Kind of almost, again, like you're kind of commanding your theater of war. That's actually something I think could be really cool if they potentially implemented something like that. However, while we're waiting, I digress, let's show you a little bit of what's actually happening here and then giving you a little bit more of that lay of the land for SS1-2. So before we get to the big stuff, let's start over here in Kaltia. So at the moment, when it comes to zone two passes or level two passes going into zone two, because they just opened well, some, some hours ago, GRZ has one, uh, UEH has one pretty much unimpeded, right? No one's really messed with them at this time, uh, just because of how deep they are on the, the TA Union side territory. So they probably have an easy in over here to Hollandale for that zone two. You got TM here who captured one. This one was captured by TMS. Uh, this pass hasn't been capped yet, and then these ones over here going to Nivola, that was Sephrostia, so you have the two here at Nivola. I think three, excuse me, four. Clearly, I can't count. Excuse me. Now, two of these on the west side of Nivola, or southwest side, don't really have anyone there. I'm not sure what FFO is going to do here. I mean, you have LMS who's here, but it didn't look like when I checked earlier they were really crowding it, and there's only a couple of them. I don't necessarily think they have great activity. Um, in order to be able to cap and then we work our way back to forgotten lands so here you can see a pass where there's top fsf now i don't really know what's happening here right you have like this tb you got sf uh all oh, looks like adversary <laughs> or adversary is up here just wrecking some face uh so again i don't know if, if sf is a uh, farm or a alt alliance for the ta union side and again, for those that are new, if you're watching, just to give you a little bit more lay of the land here, right, as far as the sides go themselves, right, you have TA, TM, TMS, GRZ, UEH versus IDL, God, BDL, I think INA, and then uh, some of the other uh, SS unions, they ended up basically merging into God and BDL, and those are kind of the two big forefront alliances, so... They basically worked their way all around Kaltia, Kaltia and Sephrastia from over here. They fought for a while here on these passes, ended up then moving to these passes and fought, fought at these passes. And that's kind of where you see them now, right? That's why you see kind of like TAs up here uh, with some territory still. But they obviously replanted their core fortress. And so this is where the fighting is happening now, right? In south of Forgotten Lands. So this level 2 pass, probably going to be capped on Impeded. TM already capped this level 2 pass. Uh, they also capped this one. TA capped this one. And so now, basically from Zoland to Burning Lands is where you have the opposition alliance. And so, you know, none of them have really pushed in. I don't know if GRZ, yeah, no, they haven't taken this. I don't know what the plan is here. If they're attempting to flank, I guess we're going to have to see because there's, oh, wow. So you do actually have some GRZ people. Oh, dude, wow, BDL's just going around, man. Yo, get him. Oh, dude, was, I thought that's a dog. I was like, yeah, man, you hunt that. That's right, man. <laughs> you you go wrangle up the sheep there, Lassie. <laughs> Uh, so again, we'll see if G we'll see what kind of pressure GRZ is going to be able to put on this pass if they're attempting to flank. Looks like BDL does have some people there, hoping to maybe stave that off. We'll have to see what TMS does here, right? Because the flank looks like it has happened. So TMS was able to get this pass. I don't know if those are TMS players. We'll see here in a sec. They are. So you got a bunch of just TMS people that are just hanging out over here. I don't know if, if they're deleting anything. Oh, they are. Wow. So you can see up here, right? So they're already removing the flag. You got 32 minutes on that bad boy. And then I don't know why they're not. Are they attacking any of these flags? They're not. Oh, they are over here. I see. So you got TMS destroying this core forger from NT17, right? That's 47 minutes left. So they'll probably clean that up. They'll clean this flag up. After the core forges is gone, they won't have to worry about the flags. And then we'll see how deep they go here as far as to keep moving on IDL. But what, I, what I'm anticipating is that they'll probably push in from this flag and either... I mean, if you're thinking about the most ideal thing for them, right, would be to just take this and then push right down here to this BDL Alliance Fortress, 
right? And if they just flag towards that and then maybe flag towards whatever the next thing, maybe they do that and they just kind of start circling and just moving here on the flank. So they'll do that move here. Uh, it will depend on, on what BDL's focus is going to be, right? Are they going to try to address TMS if they just get that close? And then it'll just kind of be a back and forth and God and IDL will have to take charge over here on the zone two northeastern front. And so that's something that can happen right and really you know for the most part i think part of it is going to depend on oh nice looks like we're getting a little bit more fighting here some more people coming out for bdl so it doesn't seem like they've pushed with all of their people yet but uh, the thing i will say is given how long the fighting has been happening here in ss1-2 especially here for zone 2 bdl and god i have to give again i do have to give a shout out right because you know we've, we talk about this often where you know, the numbers advantage is just still in the TA union side's favor, right? We talked about if you look at the top 200 when we pulled stats and did a big data overview, you know, we found that 66% of the top 200 players, so you're looking at 132, 133 of the top 200, were within a TA or TM alliance. And then you had the other side, right? This plus or minus. And then you ended up having the other side, which was comprised of, what, 66, 67 players that were on the SS union side, which was comprised of alliances from uh, season one and SS one dash one. And then the alliances from kingdom five and six that ended up joining them right to then go up against the TA union side. So even though they've been at a numbers disadvantage, I, I, I this is why I say I have to give props and I have to give, you know, my, my kudos and flowers to, to spread across because they have just been fighting nonstop, right? And you have to, at minimum, right, regardless of, of what the outcome is going to be, and even though they are fighting somewhat of an uphill battle, you have to give them their respect. And they have just been, I mean, honestly, this, I, I, am, I am happy, let me say that, with how this season has played out, despite... You know, again, I made a whole video about it with my disagreement on them adding in server five and server six into this first merge kingdom, right? That we're in with SS1, which was dash one for the first season, right? That was merged with kingdoms one through four that joined. And, you know, again, even though I still feel that way, I am happy that there has been arguably a plethora. Of fighting very almost tant tantamount to what we saw in the first season for this kingdom with forgotten lands right which are which was the uh, level one region that's northeast of where the fighting is happening over here and for those that watched any of that content and the videos that we showed with all the pvp that was happening there i mean it was insane in the membrane it was just non-stop 24 7 like 7 11 for weeks and it was fun to watch. And even, you know, once for, they kind of removed or got pushed out of Forgotten Lands, you still saw fighting that happened in Zone 2. There was more there was more hidden runs and Blitzkriegs and, um, you know, counter pushes that were happening. Uh, even after Zone 3 was already capped. You know, it was just, they just kept fighting. <laughs> you know, and it was, again, it was great. Uh, and, and, you know, I think that to me is what, when, when you're looking at the game overall, and, and you're thinking to yourself, well, you know, where's the replayability, right? The thing I've noticed thus far, especially in the Merge Kingdoms, is that it almost seems to me that the players really enjoy the PvP enough to where it doesn't matter if they're getting pushed back, right? Because they still feel that they're always going to have a chance to come back through that perseverance, through the... Uh, tactical tactical and strategic play that the ranged pvp allows right so it doesn't always feel as though it's just oh well you know they have the most t5s or they have the strongest players right you can clearly see especially with how the fighting has happened uh, again throughout the day today so far after the level two passes open you can see that bdl still has uh, a great foothold that they've made here in zone two Right, given that they've been able to push all the way up to the past. Now, of course, that is for the time being. The important part is that you have to be able to sustain that for a long period of time or longer period of time, right? So we'll have to see how the first 24 hours treat them. 
Because that will be, I think, a, a big testament. Will they be able to hold this, hold TA to the pass for 24 hours? Right, because when you think about what a 24-hour cycle involves, it involves your peak time, your, uh, well, in short, your peak and your downtime, right? I was going to say your peak and then your transition time going into your downtime, and then it gets to your downtime, and then you have the transition to raising your raising back up to your peak and then hitting your peak again, right? So that's the thing is that if you can hold during your downtime and they're on, and they're on time, right? That really is what you can then say definitively, okay, hey, we can really do something here. So again, I mean, you know, like I said, it's been great to watch, um, you know, but uh, you know, if you're looking at this situation, TA obviously hasn't sent all their people out here yet. <clears throat> uh, the one thing I'd like to see is a little bit more spread, right? You end up, when you see all these negative reds, they're just taking so much AOE damage here. Right, and TA right here, I mean, this is this is kind of where BDL and God want them to be. Ooh, jeez, dude, that Royal Punishment uh, being thrown out there from Zeke, dude, hitting what looked like four people there. That was insane. Oh, my gosh. Dude, the 40K negative damage coming out there. That was intense. Divine Mercy, we got a little tier of Arvin that's coming out there. Uh, Divine Mercy showing you that shield, right, that immune uh, that's playing in, so you can't have any damage taken up to five seconds. Uh, now we're looking like we're getting a little bit more some TA replenish, but this is the thing, right? When you're fighting, and this is the thing about the range play, you do not want to clump up, right? You're going to often hear me talk about that. You don't want to be on top of each other where you're layer where you're layering your units, right? You kind of want to be dun 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 dun, right? And then you're essentially kind of doing like a crescent move, a crescent moon. You want to be curving, so you're essentially at least for the range, you're always able to stay at max range distance. Or max distance from your opponents and then by spreading out it allows for you to reduce the amount of aoe damage you're going to take especially when you're in bigger areas you know like here where it's basically full open field uh, but now let's see here man we got coffee Ooh, dude another royal punishment man interesting oh this must be the thing that we were talking about on the cod pod with me and sneaky and shin Right, was uh, I think Sneaky brought it up. There was like some Cav guys that were basically just running around and going into a bunch of units and then just hitting Royal Punishment and any other artifacts, AOE artifacts, and just kind of doing hit and run damage drops, <laughs> which, which is interesting. So you got Lisbeth over here on the flank. This is why I say I wish I could zoom out one or two more clicks and still be able to see the, uh, the PvP map. That to me is important right now. Look at this, dude. You have, dude, this is smart play right here. This is what I love to see where you're flanking and you're just hitting as many people as humanly possible, right? And so, you know, again, Elizabeth taking advantage. It looks like Rose ends up paying attention. So, ooh, nice little drop there. Or that might have been the heal buff or the HP buff. coming back out for more but this is this is what i'm talking about right when you have cav that's the thing man just go around and just look for all those opportunities where they're gathering right now the only difference here uh that i'll mention is you don't just want to go around with one unit you want to go around with multiple legions right you want to go around like he's running emrys bakshi right if this was me and I was running Cav, I would run Emrys Bakshi Independent. And then I'd also throw... Oh, gosh, I have to remember who the other Cav guy is now. Is it Alistair? Am I right? Oh, good. Okay, look, see, my mind hasn't completely gone to mush. Right, so you'd run Alistair, right? So you got your three Cav that you can run here. That would be something I would actually like to see. So you're running three Cav Legions, and then you're just going around and hunting right for farmers you're picking off the stragglers that really is ooh nice back-to-back -back shadow games there being dealt ooh lots of damage coming in and ooh time bomb being thrown down the acid breath for the aoe damage is being struck here on the pile right where coffee is going in and fighting shogun is low on health right now ends up getting the unit destroyed anther playing some nice range play so this is what i'm talking about here's here's actually an okay example of you're seeing 
the arc starting to kind of be formed. It's not perfect, but it's not bad either, right? This is actually an okay example of that happening. And you can see here a little bit more bunching, again, a little bit on the retreat here. Uh, coral, right? And this is where you have to start really having good restraint on how you're going to kind of uh, focus fire, right? Individual units or individual legions one at a time. So you can really take advantage of what the open field is giving you, right? And in this case, where you're seeing some of the ranged play out, this is where, okay, right, so if this TA person is going to overextend, okay, right, then hit that guy. Maybe you're going for Vin Smoke. Maybe you're repositioning. Like, this isn't good, right? You essentially have, what, 10 units or so that are all fighting there. When you see all those multiple negative reds, um, especially when they happen at the same time, like right there where you saw four or five of those that got hit, you're just taking so much unnecessary damage. Instead of retreating, you just spread out, and then you re-engage, right? And this is why I think it's important to have some type of an on-field general. This is also why being in voice calls is vitally important. So that way you can take advantage of having someone that's coordinating you in your efforts. Um, and so, again, I hope that maybe they'll eventually add in some type of in-game tool support mechanism that you'll be able to utilize because honestly the fights that we've and, and i say this respectfully right the pvp fights that we've seen thus far i would just say are okay um i don't think they're amazing i don't think they're awful or bad but i think they're kind of either right in the middle or maybe a little bit below the middle and part of that is because the game is still young part of that is because you know we can't necessarily expect for every single engagement and alliance to have all of their online members in a voice call Ooh, dude nice shadow games that just got thrown down there Ooh, oh nice time bomb. i think it was time bomb that was so that another time bomb being thrown down nice oh gosh all those negative reds and right here right another example ta is just bunching right you're just clustering here for no reason uh, this actually seems okay right uh, part of me feels like god and bdl are, are at times making somewhat of a semi-conscious effort to spread themselves and i think part of it is somewhat paying dividends also because and here's the other thing right and i don't know if they're even aware of this is that if you're fighting and you're containing them close to the pass right they're almost kind of funneling they're almost passively funneling themselves into a whether it's right outside the choke point but into a more confined space where they're more likely to bunch up. And see, here's a good example, right? This is actually not a bad example if you're looking at the spreading that they're doing right now. This actually I like, at least for that instance right there. Right now I would, I would start moving these guys over. Like, that's the thing, dude. Hit them from this side too. And then, you know, I think you're going to start getting a little bit better on that front, right? So, I mean, again, you have a little bit of bunching here. Uh, and this is the thing, like, let the infantry units or the cav, like, let them come out and do their thing, and then you can always fall back and focus fire those individuals. Ooh, gosh, dude, that was intense right there for all the negative. That's like a time bomb right there that just exploded. Look at all that negative red. It just shows you how much, uh, again, unnecessary, and I say that uh, because it, it, you just have to think about it tactically. You're just taking unnecessary AoE damage, right? And... Then also being able to focus fire, right? Like, for example, you may consider focus firing the archers first if they're going to be there because they're typically going to be the highest DPS. And then maybe you'll go to some of, like, the Lilia Mage comps, right? Depending if they're running, like, Lilia Vel, Lilia Waldir, um, if maybe they're running Vel and all win, uh, depending on that. Like, I mean, again, you're, we're still seeing, even you just saw right there was the Lilia Waldir. We'll have to see what those ones are running, and I'm sure we can see some over here. And again, man, I hope people don't sleep on Alwyn, dude. Alwyn is a sleeper right now on the control tree. And I, I'm actually happy that I'm seeing some more Alwyn primaries being ran, even if it's just a one-off. Honestly, if you're going to run ranged, part of me feels like you have to run at least one legion with all run primary and, and diving into the control tree just so you get the skill suppress uh, talent, which is just, oh, dude, it is magnifique. Uh, and we talk about this on the COD pod often as well. Man, so they're, oh, dude, so see they're getting pushed back again. But again, they still haven't sent out everyone. But BDL and God, they're not doing a bad job. All right, so look, I'm at like 25 minutes, so let me just scout this bad boy. 
real quick. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about some macro play here on the map. So, okay. So this is what we're going to look at. So right now in this situation, for where you see this, TA cannot actually go anywhere, right? There's no bridge here. The only way through the area that they're in where they're fighting right now is through this little canyon here that you can see IDL is at. Dude, this is what needs to happen, right? Either IDL, right? My, and, and, and it comes, like, you gotta, like, look at this, dude. This is a long choke point that it comes out through, and then it funnels. So... What I would like to see is this, at least from IDL. I would like to see IDL to start using barricades, throw some keeps down, uh, maybe do some additional flagging, right, to kind of spread around uh, this area. And then what I'd also like to see is BDL do some additional flagging down this way and then basically just start barricading from here all the way to here right because they're going to have to push through if they decide to go south now if we look on the other end of it which is where you end up seeing tm right now they have a few more options as far as where they can go right because there's a ramp right here but that is essentially a choke point they have <clears throat> some bridges here where they can get close but that's the thing right is you either have to protect both of the bridges Right, because the thing is, they've already made it past. So you, this was kind of your choke right here, like your your first wide choke coming through. Now, given that they've already made it, you now have to consider, okay, well, where are you going to make your next stand? Because they could essentially come down from four different ramps that all bring them out to the same area. So the thing is, you could block this off so to speak, if you kind of want to create a wide net, and then it's just a matter of waiting to see where they're going to pop out from. The other option is that maybe TM decides, well, you know what, we're not going to go do that. We're just going to push down here and basically flank. That could be an option as well. However, what you have to consider is that there's no way to get through these ruins or these, um, sorry, not ruins, but you guys know what I mean, the walls here. You have to go all the way around right so no matter how it looks there is absolutely like you look look if we zoom in here yeah i don't think you can go through that canyon i don't think you can go through there so you have to look at where the mountain range is and if we analyze it all the way over here you will see that if you want to get out right here 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 it is you got to go all the way around just like just like they're doing right now with their flagging right so it's kind of two sides really when you think of it right now you can get through here right this is another choke that you can get through and then you have the bridge choke right here so you really if you think about it on TATM this is kind of where they want to try and get because if they can get here then they can block off both the both the chokes coming from burning lands so it is going to be interesting to see what they do what they decide to do um, at least again like I said when it comes to where they currently are at this moment. So we're going to have to wait and see how some more things play out. But man, this has been fun. I'm just happy I was able to catch a little bit of PvP here. Uh, because this has actually been pretty cool to watch. Especially here a little bit later on. Again, I know there was a bunch of fighting that was happening earlier. And I was so bummed. I was trying to get as much work done as I could. Before I was able to go ahead and get some recordings in. Uh, again, TM may be sending about half out right now oh gosh listen i want to keep watching i really do because again man and, and maybe you know when some of the bigger wars break out maybe we'll even consider doing some live streaming uh, it has been something that i've been uh, thinking about for a little while but i digress once again let me go ahead and start rounding this bad boy out Again, I want to hear your thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. How has the fighting been for you? How has the PvP been? Are you surprised that BDL and God have been able to hold this long already since the level 2 pass is opened? What are you most looking forward to for the remainder of SS1-2? And any other thoughts? Let me know, man. I always love reading the comments, as most of you know, and I always try to reply as much as I possibly can when, of course, I have the time. Uh, and yeah, ooh, you know what? 
psh, one thing I would, I would, you guys know me and I would always like to show this which is the stats dude our boy king of Midas is he's, he's chilling he got his account back with and he's in UEH oh man dude he's almost at 70 mil Juni ghosts there's burning our guy does uh, merits dude burning still top dog here man breaking away a little bit more from ghost even does is coming up now uh passing x uh was already i think number four but man that's big right now he's uh, what 100k ahead uh probably again decent ways away from ghost but dude does is putting in work uh juni x ghost again all asura putting in work meet doctor da 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 yes on muzza i mean again great numbers uh, let's look at some alliance power real quick. So we got 3.1, we got 2.8, 2.86, thank God. So, yeah, I mean, if you're looking at the numbers right now, it's basically a 2v4, right? Or uh, maybe a 3v4, 3v5, uh, if you will. Uh, I personally think it's a little bit more along the lines of a 2v4, right? I, I consider BDL and God to kind of still be the vanguards. I'm not sure how much impact IDL and UEH will have overall. Does Not to say that they're you know not able to do anything it's just the power is a little bit lower than once you start looking at some of the more high active alliances and we just at least for the fights i've seen so far maybe it'll happen differently in zone three but i just don't typically see a lot of those players um at, in, at least for the times i'm recording maybe they're there when i'm not recording and that could be the case uh lastly alliance merits right i always like to show these off just so you guys can see to bdl is now the top dog in alliance merits man this is what i'm talking about i absolutely love seeing this you got god here at 77 and maybe this also could be because again if they've done some rearranging or if they had sent some players from god over to bdl that could of course also in, in you know factor in i'd also like to think that they have just been doing a lot of fighting so uh, but to see this big of a an increase maybe they just had some players from god that had high high merit point counts go over to bdl and that could be a reason but still god you know nice respectable 78 mil tatm right uh basically 175 150 tms doing some fighting grz idl ndl gaz ueh i mean again man so much fighting so much pvp has been ensued here in this kingdom and like i said man i i'm just i'm just a happy observer to be able to watch commentate uh give you guys my side my opinion uh, talk a little bit of strategic shop i always think that's a nice fun uh, kind of different approach especially because of the way that the uh, gameplay and the fighting mechanics and system works in cod so okie dokie artichokies that officially is going to be it for me man we're 32 minutes into this bad boy and it's been more or less non-stop fighting since we started which i'm so happy about that is going to do it as always until next time i will catch you later